That's a lot of energy. Energy storage. Welcome to Trucking Sustainably. I'm Jason Morgan, your host. We're here at ACT Expo. We're checking out Volvo Penta Energy Storage Solutions. They're a supplier to energy storage manufacturers. We're going to talk with Darren Tasker, Vice President of Industrial Sales at Volvo Penta, to get our arms around what is battery energy storage, what are the applications, how does it relate to infrastructure, how do we charge the trucks with this solution. Let's check in with Darren. Darren, thanks for taking the time to talk. Really interesting. We want to dive into battery storage. Uh, if you could just start, give me an overview of what battery storage is and what Volvo Penta's role is in this space. Yeah, certainly, certainly. If I could just start by explaining a little bit about how Volvo Penta operates. Yeah. Um, we, we have two main segments. We have an industrial segment and, mar and a marine segment as a company. Okay. This is this is on the industrial side of our our business. And our role in life is that that, that we are the the component supplier of the Volvo Group. We are we are the sales channel to to o, to the OEM market for Volvo Group components. And the reason I explained that is because that, that's 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 exactly how we're going to market in the energy storage segment. Okay. Uh, we're taking core Volvo Group driveline components and adding uh, development, uh, uh, our own research and development teams uh, are, are developing that core component into a, a system that we're providing to energy storage manufacturers. I see. So we're taking the, 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 the energy dense um, electric driveline components that we use on the on-highway side and we use on the off-highway side, yep. and we're applying that to the energy storage segment. Oh, I see, okay. Very interesting. So uh, uh, clearly the energy storage, you know, we're here, we talk a lot with Volvo, we're looking at the VNR electric, obviously charging the trucks is a key component, the battery storage, but how does energy storage fit into maybe a broader view of fleet operations? I mean, fundamentally, we, we, we look to energy storage from, from a number of perspectives. W one is uh, charging infrastructure. Mm -hmm. This is, this is, this is a, a component in charging infrastructure. It's not, it's not designed to be Independent. Okay. Although it can be independent, uh, we do need do need a way of of, of charging uh, from from the AC side, from the grid side. Sure. Uh, it can be a, 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 a two forty volt connection, four eighty volt. It can it can go up to medium voltage uh, input connection from the grid to to charge the units. Then we've got a, a storage of energy in a in a in in the batteries yep. uh, that can be extremely quickly deployed into into a machine or a, or a, or a, or a truck. Right. Um, the limitation on how quickly we can charge from an energy storage system is not actually the energy storage system, it's how quickly can the, can the vehicle receive the charge. Right. Um, so extremely fast uh, uh, charging from an energy storage systems. And it's, 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 it's a way of, of getting the, the energy from the grid uh, slowly charging the, the system. It's energy efficient. We're not we're not consuming, uh, the, the, you know, the, there's a lot less waste in this system when it comes to right. when it comes to how we manage the, the energy. Right. Well, and that's interesting because I was going to ask how it relates to charging infrastructure. We're at Act Expo talking a lot about charging infrastructure, the need for it. This is an interesting uh, component of that because even if you think of like, look, there's talk of how much energy is needed to charge vehicles. If more fleets went electric with electric trucks, what that impact that could have on the grid. But if you have grid fed energy storage right at your location, that kind of there's a little bit of a buffer there and provides some yeah. some safety. There. And, I, and I think there's there's two ways of looking at it. One is one is it, it can be an interim solution until there's a more permanent oh, okay. fast charge um, ecosystem okay. or infrastructure. Um, but in remote locations, it's very doubtful that there's going to be a, a, a good business case for fast charging infrastructure remotely. Uh, so this can th th this can be an interim solution for fast charging um, a, a, until there's a, a, the level of investment required in the infrastructure. But but we see it as a permanent solution in more more remote locations right. um, because of the level of investment re required. Um, this is a this is a you know it's a good solution. Technology is available today, and I think it's interim, but also permanent. Right, right. Well, you know the 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 wide application of it is interesting. Well, of course we're truck people at Trucking Sustainably, but you got a lot of yellow equipment here, which is awesome with Volvo construction exactly. equipment, very near and dear to our hearts as well. Exactly. So being able to see, uh, just be able to feed the needs there is really interesting. Oh, of course, we we need to cover multiple 
um, you know, the level of investment required from 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 not not just outside, but from the consumers that who, who's going to buy these units. I mean, if if you can offset that against multiple. Uh, charging of construction machines, agricultural machines on right. highway trucks. Right. I mean, this is a this is the way to offset some of the investment. Right. Well, and we still have trucks that go to those remote locations exactly. and service those applications. So all good. You know, we've talked with the Volvo Energy uh, before about battery circularity. What role do you see these kind of solutions playing in that ecosystem? Energy storage is 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 is, is a very good way of using second life batteries. If the battery uh, state of health goes below 70%. It can go up and down, plus minus, but 70%. Then uh, the the use in a in a vehicle is is it's, it's met the end of its useful life in a vehicle. Right. Uh, so what do you do with those batteries? Right. Uh, the, the best thing you, we, that we can do with them is put them in an energy storage application. There will be some refurbishment required to get that circularity, um, and then we use them in energy storage applications. They're still perfectly good at receiving uh, charge and discharging in an energy storage application. We just need you know, some more batteries to get to that level of, uh, of capacity. Um, but you know, I think you can see we can still achieve a, a significant amount of charge yeah. with an energy storage application. So it's, it's really the perfect application for second life batteries. Right, right. We're focusing a lot on the battery electric side of things, but we are here at Act Expo, and I think one of the big uh, just narratives that's really evolved is just all the different solutions that are going to come to market to fill these application needs. If you think about this and take a step back from the conceptual level, right, energy storage, it doesn't just have to be the battery electric. I mean, there's generators, right? I know that there are some fleets even using natural gas generators right now to power electric trucks. How do you view that wider view of, of energy needs? I, I think that th this is one of the, the 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 real keys to making this commercially viable. Mm -hmm. Because if we can integrate this with other with other energy sources, such as um, diesel generators, natural gas generators, uh, renewable. So this, we can recharge the, the batteries here with renewable, solar, wind. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, we can also, if you think of a microgrid installation mm -hmm. with, with some, some, some diesel generation, natural gas generation, you know, whatever the, the internal combustion engine sources, hydrogen, right. internal combustion engines, uh, we can blend this together with energy storage. When the, when the, when, when the power's needed, the first deployment would be from the energy storage. Right. If that does get to a point where that's running down uh, to a critical point, then we can engage the, uh, the reciprocating uh, generation asset on right. site, uh, which, can, which can provide energy to site and it can also recharge the battery so we can start the cycle all over again. Right. And we can blend some renewables in there to, 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 to recharge too. So the benefit of that is, is, is that we've got, we can downsize the reciprocating asset significantly right. so we're not using as much uh, um, you know traditional diesel generation right. uh, we can we can half the size of the generators right. um, so it's having a, a significant input on moving towards uh, zero carbon right um, employing energy storage right. together with traditional generation techniques. Right. I mean, a key component, too, you mentioned that, and I think about fleets that do have uh, significant square footage on rooftops. We have seen them investing in solar. I think there are some Volvo customers on the truck side there that have done that as well, right? Energy storage, you need to put that energy somewhere, right, yes. as you're yeah, generating. And, and, and if you think about it from a grid and utility perspective, with, 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 with more, more energy generation going into distributed um, generation and producing energy locally, uh, Wind farms, right. you know, wind out in the in the Chesapeake Bay where where we're from in the in the, in the Virginia area. Yeah. You know that energy, um, it's it's either got to be used or or it's got to be stored and it's got to be managed. Yep. Um, so this is a again energy storage as a way of man of of managing the grid, but also um, providing charge to to the to the trucking world which we're obviously very very committed to, to uh, also right right hey very interesting insight there i really appreciate it thank you for taking the time thank you and thank you all for watching we'll see you on the next trucking sustainably